interesting how you mentioned earlier, Peter, that it might make things more difficult for Bill O'Brien if there were fans in the stands. Usually when coaches get got midseason, it's because ownership hears the fans in the stands, looks around and sees fewer fans in the stands, and in order to, I guess, cauterize that, fires the coach. As we know, there are no fans in the stands, uh, except in a few spots, and even when they are there, uh, they're not filling up a stadium. I I'm just wondering if that might actually prevent coaches from getting got midseason, like the Jets, who have that's never fired a, really, a coach in the middle really, of the season. That's a great question. It allows an owner to be more patient. You know, if you're not getting the chance C-H-A-N-T-S, right. in the stadium during right. the game, that's one less reason to fire a guy you really, really like. And, you know, so, look, I don't know what's what's going to happen. You know, you, I think you and I both probably get the feeling that we certainly get the feeling that Adam Gase is gone, and we get the feeling that uh, Dan Quinn, unless they have, a, you know, an absolute uh, miracle in Atlanta, uh, that he's going to be gone. And then you start to get to the next level. You know, then you start to think about Bill O'Brien. And, and you know, when you think about Bill O'Brien, you think about Matt Patricia, you know, you think basically that over the last three months of this season, they need to do pretty much a 180 from where they are right now. And I think those are the four coaches that kind of lead – the parade of guys who are going to be in the most trouble at the end of the year. And then you just wonder in each particular case, will there be a full house cleaning? Now I doubt that there's going to be a full house cleaning with the jets, nor do I think there should be. I think that Joe Douglas should be giving a full fair chance uh, to rebuild this team. I, I know from talking to people around the league and, and from knowing general managers that this is a highly, highly respected guy uh, who, by the way, has, uh, you know, at the end of this year is going to have four years and about 12 or $13 million left on his contract. So be careful what you wish for in saying that, you know, he should be gone. But I do think that, that in all these other places that there's a very good chance the GM is in trouble too. And then, you know, Matt Patricia, there's a lot of people today, um, certainly in Detroit, who took issue with him saying after they blew another game in which they led by double digits, um, taking on a, a Saints team that, again, I, I mean, you want to talk about Sean Payton said he was proud of his team, and he damn well should be. I mean, where they didn't, you know, they thought, do we have COVID or do we not? And then they had to go to sleep and sleep on that and then wake up and, and play a game on the road. And that might be the reason why they fell down by two touchdowns. But Breeze is winging it around. I just want to place the Saints aside. I, I'm sure you, again, heard the, the comment that Matt Patricia said that he didn't have a lot to work with when he got there. And a lot of people uh, took offense to that, um, especially when they thought that his predecessor should never have been fired in Jim Caldwell. I, I'll give you the floor on that subject matter, Peter. I mean, any coach who has three full seasons, which Matt Patricia is going to have, you know, barring a, them being one in 13 or something, uh, you know, in, in December, any coach who has three full seasons with a general manager who chose him and who he is by all, uh, uh, you know, by all uh, people who are close to both guys, a GM that, that he likes and he respects and who is building the team his way. You cannot expect to have more than three years in today's NFL. And you can't expect to be four games into your third year and to have won 10 games, taken over a team that went nine and seven, and to have any empathy slash sympathy or anybody agreeing with you, oh, my God, we, you know, we really needed uh, to do a lot of surgery when we took over here. Well, maybe you did, and maybe there are things the public doesn't know, but you know what? 
when you are 10, 25, and 1 in three years, no one is going to have any sympathy for you or with you over your state at that moment. And so to me, Rich, I think it was uh, a bad idea to say that, and not only a bad idea, but he said it at an inopportune time after his team blew a double-digit lead again, again, and lost uh, to, to a good team, but lost a game that they were up 14 nothing. And at some point, at some point, you know, Matt Patricia is going to have to realize that when you get three years in the NFL, three full off seasons and three seasons, okay, that is how coaches are judged these days. If they're fortunate, some coaches only get one. Ask Steve Wilkes how fortunate he feels hmm. after getting blown out in Arizona by, you know, after one year. Ask the slew of coaches who get blown out after two years. Three years maybe is not enough time that you not the time that you want, but in the NFL these days, that is what is defined as patience, a three year opportunity to turn a team around. And you really shouldn't be saying anything when in the middle of or a month into your third year, you're ten, twenty five and one and one and three this year. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.